Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Mandalorian Season 3 Trailer Breakdown. Shout out to all of you during the watch party and the live stream. There are over 10,000 of you there, and we had a great time. So this is going to be the concise breakdown, which if you want the full version, the live stream version of the reaction and everything, you can find that on the channel. It's three hours long. We played games before, and then we waited for the trailer to come out and dropped, and we did the whole reaction and everything. And it was really fun with the community. But this is going to be the one that's going to be very concise and edited. So here we go. So right off the bat, Mando says, our people are scattered like stars in the galaxy. So, so there are two different versions of Mandalorians. There's the old tribe version, which you can remove your helmet just fine. That's during the Clone Wars, during the time of the Republic. And then there's the version after when the Empire took over. And that's where you can't show your face. It's against the rules to show your face. And the reason for that is because they want their numbers to be as limited as possible, or at least perceived as limited as possible to the entire galaxy and to the Empire. So the Empire doesn't know how many Mandalorians there actually are because they're wiping them out. What do we stand for? So right here we see the Night Owls. These are the Mandalorians that are loyal to o Katan Kreese. I've done a whole video on the Night Owls. They are a different sect of Bo-Katan's type of Mandalorians. Called the Night Owls was a human woman named Bo-Katan Kreese, who believed in the martial traditions of Mandalore's past, while her sister, Duchess Satine of Mandalore, steered her people towards a more non-violent, pacifist path. Bo-Katan decided to join a radical Mandalorian terrorist group called Death Watch, which also sought to revive their people's wearing heritage. So, when she joined the extremists, the Night Owls sided with them. She remained their leader. The Night Owls' armor and equipment was similar in appearance to that worn by the Death Watch. They had the same type of weapons, too. As once the Republic transitioned into the Empire, Freeze and her Night Owls refused to follow the new Galactic Emperor, Palpatine. And thus, she lost her position as regent, and the clan Saxon took her place. The imperial presence on Mandalore led to yet another civil war that lasted for years. It wasn't until Bo-Katan met Countess Ursa Wren and her daughter Sabine, who gave the Night Owl leader the Darksaber, an ancient lightsaber that was a symbol for the Mandalorians for worthiness and leadership, that the clans could be united once again. For when the two members of Clan Wren gave Kreese the saber, they were declaring her worthy of being the new Mandalore, the leader of all Mandalorians. Now this guy's symbol right here is Clan Eldar. As we can see here, some information is Clan Eldar consisted of Mandalorian warriors that donned Mandalorian armor with black, dark green, orange combinations. Their signet was the face of a Leonid creature. And these guys were essentially very loyal to Bo-Katan. And their main purpose was to fight against the Empire. So it seems like Mando has a whole bunch of different Mandalorians from different sects, different clans coming together for one purpose. And it seems like they're unified. They're being unified. And maybe this is the Mandalorian's journey. This is his story to unify all of the Mandalorians, which is something that Bo-Katan wanted to do, but she needs the Darksaber to do it, or so she thinks she does. Whereas the Mandalorian really doesn't care for it. So as you can see, of course, Din still has the Naboo and one Starfighter, which was a really great episode in the Book of Boba Fett. If you guys are confused why Grogu is here, make sure you watch the Book of Boba Fett, or at least the last several episodes, which will explain why Grogu is now reunited back with Mando. He left Luke. He didn't want to be a Jedi anymore. He wanted to be with the Mando. So here's Mando and Grogu landing back on Navarro 7, where Grief Karga is chilling. Now, Cara Dune, she was a ranger of the Republic. And now, of course, since Gina Carano is sadly no longer in the Mandalorian, unjustly so, uh, I don't know what's going to become of her character or what they're going to do to explain that she's not around anymore. But I guess we'll have to wait for that. But as for this scene in Navarro 7, Grief Karga is back in action, which is You'll great to see. Lost. This, of course, is not Salacious B. Crumb. This is just a Kawakian lizard monkey, and this is the same kind of species of uh, Salacious Bikram that we saw in Jabba's palace on Tatooine. So right here we see Mando, Grogu, and we see Grief Karga. Right here, something pointed out in chat, are a bunch of burned stormtrooper armored helmets. And on top of it is an IG-88 leg. What? Again, I think this, or IG-88 in general, is probably just standing on top of them, and I think this is a statue that was made to honor IG-88's 
sacrifice from the first season and how he protected Grogu and the Mandalorian. Now, of course, during this time, the Empire is not around anymore. The remnants of the Empire still are, of course, as we saw in the first season. However, as a whole, the Emperor is not around. It's the First Order that's going to be coming into play later on. But right now, everyone is just kind of enjoying their downtime, but they know something is brewing. This planet, very watery planet. Not sure exactly where it is. It could be Mandalore, but it could also be Kamino. And the reason I say Kamino and a lot of others in the chat during the watch party said Kamino is because of them going to track down all of the cloning facilities that were not destroyed. Because if you didn't watch the Bad Batch season one, Kamino was actually destroyed by the Empire. And for those of you new to Star Wars, hello. General Kamino. Kamino is the facility where all the clones were created. Why is this relevant? Well, Dr. Pershing, who we saw in season one of The Mandalorian, who was taking care of Grogu, had a Kamino cloning facility patch on his uniform. So why is he a scientist from the cloning facility? So that is obviously some new armor being created, I imagine, and this maybe is in response to The Mandalorian saying that he's going to Mandalore. So that I may be forgiven for my transgressions. This is unfortunately the remains of Mandalore after the Empire absolutely bombarded it with TIE bombers, which we saw in season two, I think some flashbacks. So obviously there are still, still some Mandalorians that are probably roaming around maybe underneath the surface, but for the most part, it's destroyed. This looks like R5 and it looks like it's the same R5 with Pali Mato on Tatooine. R5 is the same droid that Luke first picked, or uh, Uncle Owen first picked, when they were at the beginning of A New Hope, when they were going to get R2-D2 and C-3PO just shortly after, and R5 had the bad motivator. Now there's a cute little story in Legends where R5 was actually Force-sensitive and saw that R2-D2 is the droid that is the chosen one, and he's supposed to actually bring the knowledge of Obi-Wan Kenobi to Luke. So he self-imploded, he caused himself to have a bad motivator and in turn saved the galaxy. It's a super like, it's it's a it's a Legends legend story. So it's not even, not even Legends, it's like beyond. It's just like a fun story that was created by Lucasfilm, I believe. So of course, this right here is a pit droid from um, the Phantom Menace. They were helping in the pod race scenes. This looks like it could be Tatooine. This of course is Coruscant where the Jedi Temple is. And what happened to the Te Jedi Temple now? Palpatine took it over. Uh, well, not anymore because Palpatine's dead, but Palpatine took it over during the time of his reign and created it as the HQ for himself and for the Empire. So here's Dr. Pershing. This is the same doctor that was looking after Grogu in season one. He's not wearing his same uniform anymore, I don't believe, but he does have a red key card or something, a red tag. Maybe it allows him access to some sort of restricted, majorly restricted section. If we've all played video games, we know a red key card is a special thing. It becomes big. Here's Carson Teva. He's the one who gave Cara Dune the Republic Ranger uh, emblem and promoted her, essentially. And he is talking to no one knows. It could be Mon Mothma. It could be Luke Skywalker. It could be Din Djarin. It could be somebody else. Um, but at the end of the day, he essentially knows something bad is coming. So we're going to have to see and find out who he's talking to. This scene right here is not... Carson Teva talking to Mandalorian. This is on Mandalore. And if we've seen from the other trailer, this is him walking through Mandalore. And I believe he comes across Bo-Katan sitting on the throne here. This looks like the springs beneath Mandalore. So this looks like where Din probably has to go in order to become a Mandalorian once again, or you know, save face, so to speak. This looks like a Mandalorian. It could be a Mandalorian Crusader, but it could just be a Mandalorian that was killed during the bombardment from the Empire. And I'm sure that there are a lot of different skeletons laying around, but of course the armor is still intact because it's Beskar. So a lot of it's very um, invincible. This is a very cool scene. So this is a flashback of Grogu. We can see it is a flashback of him seeing this because we can see the reflection of the lightsabers in his eyes right here, blue and green, and blue and green. And who do we have? We have four different Jedi protecting him. I don't know who the Jedi are. People were saying this could be Sindrelig, who was the lightsaber master, and also the one that Anakin killed during Order 66. I don't think it is Sindrelig, as Sindrelig had a little more white hair, and this is not his lightsaber, although he did have a green lightsaber. Who is this coming through the door? Probably Anakin Skywalker, 
and his 501st clones. Or it could be someone coming through to save Grogu. Maybe Jocasta knew. It would be pretty sweet if it was Anakin. This is a Mandalorian Fang fighter, and this is actually Din Djarin, I assume, inside of it. I'm thinking this could even be Mandalore, and he has gotten in the ship and he's just trying to get away, and the Empire, or remnants of the Empire, are trying to destroy him. Pretty cool looking ship. I also sh saw this ship in Rebels. So here's a, some sort of a cantina with droids, and it's funny because in A New Hope, they said no droids are allowed, and now it's all droids are in here. It's like no humans, no real sentient beings. The B1 battle droids we see here are pretty cool to see them again from the Clone Wars. What they're doing, I don't really know. Maybe they're just chilling out. There's a few of them remaining in the galaxy. Maybe they're under someone's control. Maybe they've been reprogrammed. Or maybe they're just living out their freedom. Who knows? But we see some concept art here as well from Ralph McQuarrie. Some original droid concept art. As well as a black R2-D2, which was in the comics as a, an evil being with him in triple zero. Here we have Death Watch landing on Navarro 7. They're obviously in the similar spot as we saw earlier with Din Djarin and Grief Karga, where this uh, statue, this sculpture of the burnt Stormtrooper helmets with what used to be IG-88 standing atop of it, which now isn't anymore, seems to be in ruins. The walls are destroyed, looking all black, like a lot of explosions have gone down. Maybe the Death Watch crew are saving the day, or maybe they're running a siege on Navarro 7. Why? I'm not sure, but it seems like one Mandalorian's dead. A lot of people were saying this could be Sabine Wren. I don't really think so, but uh, I guess we'll see. Yeah! Babu Frick, or at least his species. Okay, so right behind this guy, who we don't really know who his, what his species is, I think is the Mandalorian, and he's been knocked out, and now it's Grogu's turn to come in and save the day. I think it's on Mandalore. And Grogu obviously pushes this creature out of the way with the Force. He's become much more powerful. Probably because of Luke's training or just because of his overall ability to remember where he came from and his training in general at the Jedi Temple. Because if you remember, he trained with all of the Jedi, like Count Dooku, Mace Windu, uh, Yoda, everybody, right? So he was extremely well trained. And that's it. Season 3 comes March 1st with eight episodes leading to the end of April. I think this season is going to be the biggest one yet, Mandalorian Season 3. I also think that there is going to be one main antagonist, but above all, there's going to be a massive overarching one, which could be Thrawn. Now, I think the Bo-Katan will be the villain in this show, and in the end, they're eventually going to realize that there's someone much bigger they have to worry about. Now, whether that could be Moff Gideon bringing someone in, calling someone in, it could be Grand Admiral Thrawn, or it could be somebody else that we don't know about yet. I mean, at this point in time, if we want to connect what is canon in this universe, unfortunately, Palpatine is alive. What? and he is on Exegol. So what is his involvement with the galaxy at this time? Is he just laying low? Does he have Snoke involved yet? What is going on? Are there other Sith or apprentice Sith apprentices around? What's really happening? Now, in a book, there was the mention that Snoke had another apprentice besides Kylo, who is a Sith, and I don't know who that is. We still have yet to know. There were a lot of things written in a lot of different books and excerpts that never were finalized or uh, extrapolated upon. So we don't know what's going to happen with that. But at the end of the day, I think this season will be the best season of Star Wars, of Mandalorian that we have ever had. I think there's a lot that can come out of this. And just judging by these new images in the trailer and the, the, new, the new clips, I think there's a lot of different avenues that we can go into, and it seems like we will, with Mando's redawning of his Mandalorian status. And, of course, with Grogu in Order 66, there's a lot that could happen. And who is he telling all of this? Like, why is he having these visions? Is it because Luke is there, probing into his mind? Is he remembering on his own? Is he telling Ahsoka? Are we going to see more Ahsoka? Are we going to see Sabine Wren? Are we going to dive into Ahsoka's story from here and learn more about her? A lot of stuff. A lot of really cool stuff that we can dive into. I'm very excited to go into it, and I hope you guys are too. Let me know what you thought of the trailer. We got to see a ton of new stuff in this one, and I can't wait until March 1st when the show comes out and we do the watch parties. It's going to be an absolute ball. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching today's breakdown. Leave a like on your way out. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, remember the Force will be with you always.